Hey, before we get into today's conversation, I have a favor to ask. CityCast Philly is surveying our listeners to help us make CityCast Philly a better, more useful podcast for you. Please go to citycast.fm slash survey to take the survey. It's only five minutes long. We timed it. That's citycast.fm slash survey. When you take the survey, you'll also be eligible to win a $250 Visa gift card. Go to citycast.fm slash survey. Okay, now here's the show. Today on CityCast Philly, it's the Friday News Roundup. We're talking about Temple University's new safety plan, Philly Pride, and other June events you don't want to miss. It's Friday, June 2nd. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Joining me this week is our arts and culture contributor, Charles Tyson Jr. Hey, Charles. Hey, Trine. Hey. And joining us is Maggie Mancini, staff writer at Philly Voice. Hey, Maggie. Hi, thank you for having me. Sure. Now, before we get into the news of the week and what we got going on for this weekend, today is National Donut Day. If you didn't know, where do y'all like to get donuts in the city? I'm a huge fan of federal donuts. Yeah. You know, for, it, it took me a while to get there for the first time. And I was like, well, there's a lot of hype. And, you know, when there's a lot of hype about something, I, I get suspicious. But they live right. up to the hype. They really, really do. <laughs> do you have a favorite donut from them? I've never had the same one twice. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. Uh, the last one I had was the Bowie themed one. And it's just something about the 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 essence of David Bowie around it that just made it extra tasty. <laughs> nice, nice. I love getting the dirty chai if it's available in classic, like old fashioned. Okay. What about for you, Maggie? I would say my favorite is probably Dottie's Donuts. Oh, okay. I know that there's one in the city proper, Mm -hmm. but I typically go to the one in Wissahickon, the like Maniac area. Okay. I mean, vegan donuts are awesome. Specifically, like I love that they have different flavors every day. I wish that they would make their their pickleback donut that they released around St. Patrick's Day like all year round. Nice, Um, nice. It's pickles in the donut? Yes. That's an interesting combination. (laughs) All right, Maggie, let's get into some of the news. Uh, We'll start with your story. You recently focused on a city council resolution that calls for Temple University to include the surrounding North Philly community in its new safety plan. What's happening here? Well, uh, this all sort of comes back to the public safety audit that Temple announced was being led by former police commissioner Charles Ramsey back at the beginning of 2022. He led the audit and the results of which were released, um, I believe, in April of this year. This like huge sprawling document, like 130 pages, I believe, with 68 recommendations for how Temple could sort of streamline their public safety process, improve their police response times, and sort of give students, staff, and the larger community peace of mind. One of those recommendations was the Temple Community Safety Plan, which City Council highlighted during last week's session, which is essentially just including the larger North Philadelphia community, even outside of TUPD's jurisdiction, in the decision-making around public safety and around the policies that the university will implement as part of this larger new safety plan. Now, do we know if, you know, this is typical for a university to include the larger community when it comes to plans like this? Um, I would imagine for urban campuses like UPenn and University City, yes. You would want the larger community to in some ways feel included in that decision making. But the sort of big violent incidents that are happening in and around that campus are impacting those residents in the same way that they're impacting the students that are only there 10 months out of the year. And let me just ask, did Temple release the safety plan or is it still in its proposal phase? Um, It seems like it's uh, sort of just in the proposal stages. They have said that they will implement 
some, if not all, of the recommendations from the safety audit, but it's unclear at this point. Got you. And for full disclosure, I graduated from Temple. Woohoo to you. To you. Thank you. All right. Speaking of other top stories, this month is Pride Month. And in Philly, we do it big. So this year's LGBTQ organization, Galay, is actually hosting this year's parade. Charles, there's there's a lot of drama around Philly Pride mm-hmm. and um, how it kind of unraveled in the past year or so. Can you tell us, like, catch us up? Wh- what's going on? Charles, so, <laughs> <laughs> so this year will be the second year of Philly Pride 2.0, I guess we can call it. Last year, it was... Uh, hosted by a ragtag young group of upstarts called uh, Philly Pride PHL or something like that. For two decades before that, it was run by Philly Pride Presents and uh, executive director uh, Franny Price. And there was a whole lot of upheaval because at some point the narrative came about that uh, the organization was racist and transphobic and uh, was clutching to power. And it's interesting because, you know, I know all the parties involved. So I'm watching this happen going, where did this story come from? And, and you know, so this narrative just, just, got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think the linchpin for the the whole thing was there was a, a social media post that came out from Philly Pride Presents. Shouldn't have happened. Well, what was the post? It was in reference to Stonewall. Mm-hmm. And the language of the post was something like gay men and people dressed as women instead of trans okay. people like it's just it yeah. was problematic in the way and and the image was reminiscent of the blue lives matter flag but instead of the the blue stripe it was a rainbow stripe it wasn't good basically okay got it okay not good choices so correct me if i'm wrong the philly pride parade didn't happen last year no so when they when the new group took over, they basically wanted to do away with everything that was done the way bef- the the done before and do it a new way. Right. So there's like no floats, no vehicles, no corporate banners right. are allowed, which right. you know, corporations often get called out on how they handle this month. Right. Yeah. There's arguments being made on both sides. Mm-hmm. You know, I can understand Pride has gotten very corporate and June is very much companies slapping a rainbow on things and calling themselves allies for exactly 30 days. And then (laughs) July 1st, where'd it go? But at the same time, that's where a lot of the funding comes from, you know, so we're starting over in a grassroots way, which is admirable. And so, like you said, there's no floats, there's no, parade per se there is a march that is led by the bearded ladies this year the grand marshal is the philly dyke march and the executive director of galay there's going to be all kinds of events it's going to be centered around the gayborhood as opposed to culminating at penn's landing the way it used to Got you. Maggie, you also wrote about this. This is actually, they're calling it the Love, Light, and Liberation March. I like that. Tell us what the parade route is. The Love, Light, and Liberation March will begin at 6th and Walnut at around, I believe, 1030 or 11 o'clock on Sunday, which I know Galay had said was sort of intentional and relevant because This was the space where the sort of reminder day demonstrations were at the beginning of the sort of modern day gay liberation movement and queer liberation movement in the 1960s. Um, And it was also where the city's first Pride Day celebration concluded in 1972. Oh, wow. Some history there. Okay. Um, So they will be heading from Walnut to... I believe 10th Street and then 10th to Locust and then 
the march will conclude at 11th and Locust, and then the sort of Pride 365 festival will begin by around noon on Sunday. Nice. And obviously there will be some street closures. You can check out Maggie's story in our show notes to get a list of those streets. All right, Maggie. Also, if people are heading to some state parks this weekend, there's some good news. They might find some free stuff. What's happening there? So about 46 state parks this summer will have sunblock dispensers, uh, battery operated. You can just walk up, put your hand underneath. It's a program that's been going on for about five or six years now through the Pennsylvania Department of Health and some nonprofits that work in the uh, skin cancer prevention arena. But it's meant sort of twofold to promote the use of the state parks and to get people outside and to use sort of all of the free amenities that are there, the beaches, pools, just the regular park wildlife areas, but also to make sure that people are staying safe, people are staying protected, and hopefully preventing the prevalence of skin cancer in Pennsylvania, which um, the Department of Health estimates that one in 40 Pennsylvanians will experience skin cancer at some point in their lifetime. Interesting. You know, sunscreen is always that like that last minute thing that I always forget to put in the bag. (laughs) Sunscreen and bug spray. So if they get like free bug spray, let me know. (laughs) Text me. Also, which parks are going to have these dispensers? Um, So there are about seven or eight that are in sort of the southeastern section of the state, places like Neshaminy State Park in Bucks County, Ridley Creek in Delaware County. French Creek and Marsh Creek and Chester County. And I believe that there is a map of all of them, including the ones that are sort of out in the western and northern parts of the state um, in my story that people can check out as well. Yeah, this is such great news. All right, Charles, what other arts and cultural events are on your agenda for the month of June? June is Busy, busy, busy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about Pride, which is major, major, major. Also, that same weekend, June 2nd through the 4th, is the Roots Picnic. Classic. <laughs> yep. And everybody's going to be there. <laughs> yes. And I uh, have to drive around that Man Center area in the mornings. And Good luck. Yeah, it's going to be crowded, y'all. It's going to be crowded. (laughs) (laughs) But that's going to be exciting. You know, all the big, big names in entertainment are going to be there. Lauren Hill and Dave Chappelle is going to be a headliner. Diddy and The Roots were scheduled to be an event. But apparently Diddy got swapped for Usher, which... Not a bad replacement. That, as, <laughs> hey, I think, hey, sure. Right. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> Can't be mad at that. And I just want to plug that also there's going to be some other Philly artists. Uh, they're going to have like a state property reunion if you're a hip hop head. Nice. And also I heard that Eve is coming through on the stage. Yes, so. Eve is going to be there. It's going to be hot. I'm excited. I'm excited. And in addition to that, Juneteenth is this month, and there's all kinds of opportunities to celebrate and acknowledge Juneteenth. In West Philadelphia in particular, there's going to be a lot of activity, specifically around Malcolm X Park Mm -hmm. and 52nd Street. There's going to be parades and festivals and performances. This is going to be on Sunday the 18th because actual Juneteenth is on a Monday this year. Got it. But if you go to uh, JuneteenthPhilly.org, you'll see the rundown of all the the events that are going to be happening. There's a parade from noon to two along 52nd Street, Art in the Park, 10 to 8, Malcolm X Park, Children's Village. It's going to be amazing. So I, I'm excited about that. And Adunde, the Adunde Festival, is also in June. Another Philly staple. Exactly. Classic. Adunde has become the national model for cultural street festivals. Really? Yeah. When people want to figure out how do we do this, 
check out a dunde. <laughs> now, do they tell people that, you know, um, it? you know what I love about a dunde? And let, let's just be honest. It's like <laughs> a big family reunion, right? Uh-huh. But there is etiquette that you have to do. If you see someone you know, you have to hug real quick and keep walking because they're so crowded yeah. in the streets. <laughs> yeah, because they attract up to 500,000 people. I'm not even sure how that's possible, but it happens. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that is a huge celebration of African diaspora and African American traditions and, and, and performances and food and culture and community. It's just, uh, I performed there. My introduction to a Dunde was performing the very first dance company I was ever a part of, Persona Zenobia Dance Ensemble. We performed, and I was amazed by the 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 by the everything that was there. It was just so colorful and bright, and um, it's always a highlight, and I recommend it. All right, that was our arts and culture contributor, Charles Tyson Jr. Thanks so much for the list of events, Charles. Of course, it's always a pleasure to be. And Maggie Mancini, staff writer at Philly Voice, thank you so much for joining us on CityCast Philly. Thank you for having me. It's time for the tip of the week, where we share a life hack for living in Philly. It's been a few weeks since primary election day, but when I drive around the city, sometimes I still see campaign signs scattered on people's porches, front yards, or even near bus stops. According to Axios Philadelphia, it could be a while before all the signs are taken down because many of them can't be recycled. Now, the streets department will remove campaign signs that are on public property. But other than that, there's no real program dedicated to collecting old election signs. The good news is that you can recycle the campaign signs that look like cardboard. You can put them out with your other recyclables or you can take them to the sanitation centers. If you have a tip of the week, we'd love to hear from you, too. Call or text us at 215-259-8170. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. Our lead producer is Laura Benchall. Our producer is Abby Fritz. Our Hey Philly newsletter editor is Brittany Valentine. And our host is me, Trina Nuri. Music is by Philly's own Interminable, with additional music from All the Kimonos and James Weldon. If you enjoyed this week of episodes, please tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Philly. We'll be back Monday morning with more news from around the city. Have a great weekend and be safe. Bye. And the construction just began. Yay. <laughs> uh. <laughs>